How are we doing? Fox back again from Sound Design Tutorials. Um, this is going to be a tutorial showing you how to set up um, Isotope Neutron so you can use the Dynamic EQ to sidechain certain sounds. I'm going to use a real basic kick and bass pattern to highlight this. In fact, I'm just going to delete everything out of there. So we're left with just the kick. I'm going to have to bring that bass back. So now we've literally just got a kick and a quick bass that I've made. Just going to EQ the kick quickly. Just how I would. Put an EQ on the bass. See, there's a lot going on. I'll probably introduce a bit more sub as well. So yeah, in the EQ, you can see there's a lot going on. Now, generally, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to duck this out the way of the kick. Most common thing to do would be slap a compressor on, side chain it to the kick, put a basic EQ on it, slam it. Now you can hear everything's being pushed out of the way. Absolutely everything. We're absolutely murdering it. So it's not very practical. It's not a good idea for when you're doing proper mixing. So how you can do that inside Isotope, Neut Isotope Neutron is can you, you can zoom in on what frequencies you want to duck and then use an external input or an internal input to do that. So we're going to go ahead and drop an Isotope Neutron onto the base. Keep things nice and organized. We're going to rename it base up here. We're also going to put one on the kick just so I can show you that you can't get the audio direct from this kick to do it. You have to create sort of an extra layer. We're going to call this one kick. Now, if we bring the base one up, if we say we want to mask it or we want it to listen to the kick channel, you can see the audio the uh, input from the kick channel flashing in the background of the bass. So this is the main one, what we want to be doing the ducking on. We turn up this sensitivity. This is then going to highlight problem frequencies between the two. So this is your ba this is your kick channel. This is your bass channel. These highlighted flash areas up here are going to show you where there's some problems going on. In the sub area, which we knew was going to happen, if I push this slider up, it might show some con contrasting frequencies where the click of the kicks coming through as well they're not really going to be causing us much problem it's mainly going to be the bass so we'll reset that so yeah anything from sort of 60 hertz down we want to be sorting out so there's a simple way that you can do that on the bass channel. You could literally just pull this down. But now we've took all of the sub out of the bass altogether. So how you can introduce a dynamic node is you press that little arrow at the bottom. This then brings up the controls for each individual element. So say if we wanted to duck this slow shelf, we could bring in the dynamic node, turn it on. Turn it to an internal band. Set it to band one, say. 
It's listening to this and it's ducking to this band. Very sporadic, it's not pumping in and out. You could set it to an external band. This would then listen to the input coming from the kick channel, but it doesn't work. It doesn't respond to nothing. You should be seeing the transient kick of the punch. Um, it's a, probably a down floor, downside in Ableton that it does this. So we, we're going to have to set up a separate audio channel to do the ducking for us. Um, you can use any audio, in, any audio input you want. I've found the best thing to do is to use a pure sine wave. So that's exactly what we're going to do. An easy way to do this. First of all, we're going to delete the neutron off the kick track because we know that we can't use, we can't channel the audio directly from that and it respond to it. So we're going to create another instance, um, another MIDI channel if you like. We're going to use, we'll just use ISO, um, Extra Records Serum again. We're going to drag a isotope neutron onto this track as this is the, now the channel that we're going to be used as the sidechain input to duck it out of the way. So we'll call this one kick. We will drag the MIDI from the kick onto the serum channel. We're going to change this to a basic shape. As I say, a pure sine wave is the best. What we then need to do is we need to work out where this, where the best frequency of this sine wave is. It's, it's only got a fundamental, so it's going to be easy to do. We'll drag an EQ onto this now. It's just a shade under 600 hertz. So now we know that this that is the point that we want to get the bass track to listen to the audio from this channel. So we're going to go back to the bass channel, which is this. What we have to do is we have to send the audio from this, the new channel that we've created. We'll call this. Uh, SCI side chain input. We need to send the audio from this to 13 serum, which is the base group. So now neutron on the base group will be able to pick up this. It automatically knows what it's doing. Let it says three and four neutron. So now when we do masking, we're gonna mask it from kick. There's nothing there on the kick because I've deleted it. But we did call it kick. So yeah, masking from the kick. You can see this is this is showing at what point that is coming in. Just a shade under 600 hertz. So this is the input that we can now use to do the side chain compression that we want. So if we bring in the kick one again, if we set a band, we can pick any band. Let's just choose band three. We set it exactly at where that input's coming in. Do a little duck. So if we say 580, I've got that out. You can see at the bottom there, it says 580.42 hertz D5. Now that, out of, just out of interest, that is exactly what these were, D4, but we've got it an octave. The, the octaves in Serum are a little bit messed up, so this is actually playing at D5. So that we know we're exactly fine in that sweet spot. All this is doing is setting up something that we can use to trigger the sidechain compression. Um, this is the be definitely the best way to do it using a pure sine wave. So 586 hertz. Now we go back to the bass track, which we want to use. We're going to use this low shelf. We go back to our dynamic node, turn it on, set this to external band five. Now what this means is it's going to use external band three, sorry. It's going to use anything inside this band or this exact pinpoint that we've just created to duck the side chain. So we turn it on, external band three. This only works when you're in masking mode and you've assigned it to listen to the, the channel that's bringing the audio in. One way that you know that you're out in setup right is if you solo this channel that we've created, we're gonna hear the bass channel. So you know that the audio from this is going to that bass. So we're gonna uncheck it again. Now, as by magic, you can see this pumping. So if we say we wanted anything low of sort of 60 hertz when we when we found those corresponding clashing frequencies. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is where the uh, the brilliance of using an, an instance of Serum to control this is. Excuse me. It's this one. We can um, control exactly the length that, the, that we want. I mean, if we go and just make these notes a lot, lot longer, if I control A, drag them all out. Now, if we go back to the base channel, you're going to be able to see the input and exactly what's going on. So we've got it. You can see it's holding on to the uh, compression, if you like, or the ducking, the exact length of those MIDI notes that we've got drew in there. So now you've got an, your own attack release just using the amp envelope. So bring the sustain down. Real short decay. Bring the threshold down more. This is responding now in a much more rhythmically and musical way. You can literally just control the how fast that that takes for it to pop back out again by the decay. So if we have a real long decay. You can see it's taking a lot longer for it to pump back out. You really want, um, it's going to depend on what genre you're doing, but with drum and bass, I've found that... Um, quarter of a second or just under 200 milliseconds seems to work perfect it just gets the everything out of the way enough and releases it to let everything back in see lovely brilliant response i mean if we change this to any any old any old preset rather than a pure sine wave so, I mean, I've seen people just copying, um, I mean, for this instance, the kick probably would have been good enough anyway because it has quite a snappy transient. But when people have been using, trying to duck um, a pad out the way of a pluck, say, I've seen some people doing tutorials um, using this exact same way, creating up a new audio track to channel the audio, but they've been using the original preset to try and duck things out of the way. Best thing to do is just forget that. Just create a brand new initialized preset, as I said. Use your basic shapes, pure sine wave, and then just control it with the decay of the amp envelope. We'll just solo it with and without that. Much clearer. It's going to help you have much clearer mixes. Enables you a lot more precision um, on how you can sidechain things out the way. Uh, another misconception with which I've found when watching tutorials on sidechain compression is um, we'll do away with that now. It's finished. Is that when people were trying to do it the original way or the the way that most people do, just ducking things out of the way with this child sidechain compression, they were trying to tell people that this EQ meant at what frequencies were being ducked out the way it doesn't this eq inside the sidechain compressor in ableton pinpoints at what frequency it's going to listen to to do the ducking so you can achieve a similar response but it is always going to compress the whole audio or the whole spectrum that's why using neutron to do this is much much better you can pinpoint exactly where you want to duck whether it's a certain band whether it's the whole thing or like we've just done, just ducking the bass out of the way. So it's much, much better way of doing your sidechain compression using isotope neutron. For me, it's a game changer. It's been absolutely brilliant for me. Um, it took a while for me to get to grips with it. Creating a separate audio track or a separate channel to do it for you seems a little bit long-winded, but once you get used to it, it is definitely the way to go, as I say, because you can pinpoint those exact frequencies that you want to move out of the way. Yeah, I hope you learned something. Any questions about Neutron, feel free to ask in the description. Please donate if you've got any spare change. It really does help me. <laughs> Link in the description also. Check out my uh, recent production challenge uh, sort of remix competition. Everything's on my Facebook page. You need to know about that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.